Hello everyone, I'm Bets Golden. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be working on two Halloween cards and I'm going to be using my Copic markers for this video. And so I thought that it might be a really good thing to take a little bit of a refresher course on how to use Copic, Copic markers or alcohol markers, you guys. All Copic markers are just alcohol markers. So these techniques that I'm showing you can be used with your um, tri-blends, your Copics, any kind of al alcohol marker that you have, anything that's alcohol-based, these techniques will go across the board. Down below, I do have listed for you the basics of what you will need in order to, to use Copic markers with some of your stamped images. I show you uh, what ink pad I like to use. I'll go over that in the video as well. And then I also have a couple different recommendations for some alcohol markers for you. Now, I by no means am a alcohol marker colorist uh, specialist. I've never taken a class. I've watched a couple videos. I've gone through like creativation and I've, I've stopped at like the alcohol marker booths and I picked up some techniques there. So I am bringing you as a beginner, as a novice, the things that I have learned over the last five years of playing with alcohol marker. You guys, you don't need really any special skills to do this. It probably is the most forgiving type of marker that you can use and you'll see why. So let's head down to the table and let me show you how you can color with your Copic markers. This is a great video if you are a beginner and it also is gonna be a nice refresher and there's gonna be some good tips in there if you already are comfortable with a Copic marker. Make sure you check out my description box below to see everything that I'm using in case you're interested. I will have all of that listed down below. So make sure that you go ahead and check that out. All right, let's get down to the table and start playing. First thing you want to do when you are playing with Copic markers is you want to check your paper. It is super important that you have an alcohol safe paper. I do have one listed down below for you that is alcohol safe. It is this is a crucial step because if it's not alcohol safe, it's not going to blend right. It might even bleed and you'll be like, "Why does it seem like I'm coloring in the lines, but it's outside the lines. So make sure your paper is alcohol ink safe. Next thing that you want to do whenever you're doing this, especially if you're a sloppy colorist like me, is you want to use a misty because we're going to be coming back to this at the very, very end. And you're going to want to stamp with an alcohol ink um, stamp pad that's, that's safe for alcohol ink. Uh, I have tried a lot. I have. I don't want to throw names out there because some of them are bigger and they make great alcohol of great inks for other things. But for alcohol ink, mm -mm. I've even used some of you guys that have said that they are alcohol safe. And I have never been so frustrated with um, just how much it messed up my coloring because it wasn't alcohol safe. So and there's like, oh, well, you have to let it dry and da 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 da. I'm sorry, but... I don't want to have to do that. My my true, my standby is Memento. This stuff is the best. I've used it from the beginning when I started. I have deviated and tried other um, other alcohol ink safe, safe ink pads and they're nothing, nothing like this. The only one that comes close is Brutus Monroe's Raven Detail Ink. This one you also can use with alcohol ink. It's a little bit harder to find, but it's a great pad. This one you can find at any big shop box um, retailers. I have it listed for you down below as well. You do will not want to use something that is waterproof because this is alcohol, right? So just because it says it's waterproof does not mean that it's safe. You definitely want to go with an alcohol ink safe ink pad. All right, so we're going to just go ahead and I'm going to stamp this up and start coloring. Now remember, 
I'm not going to take this out of my Misty just yet. I'm actually going to set it aside because I'm, I may need to use it at the end and I'll show you why. So make sure you stick around and see that little tip. All right, now I am going to go ahead and take a piece of scratch paper and put it underneath the image that I want to color. What this does is if there is any marker, any ink that seeps through, it'll be caught on my paper, and I'm actually gonna fold this in half, instead of being caught on my silicone mat and soaking back up into my image or on my glass mat. This just allows it to soak into my paper and stay there instead of soaking back up into my image. I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can use alcohol marker to get a similar effect. The one is the traditional way in which I'm going to first start with a lighter shade, then move into my medium shade, and then into my darker shade, and then go back over it all with my light shade as the blender. Never use the blending tool or the blending marker as a blender, it's not, an er it is actually an eraser. Your lighter color is always gonna be what you're gonna blend with. This set right here I have listed below. This is a wonderful set. It is um, the more economical brand of Copic. There's 36 colors in here that you can do skin tones, you can do uh, nature scenes, clothing, whatever you want. This has a wonderful gamut of all of that. And then I'm gonna show you another alternative at the end that you can color with um, that if you don't wanna have to worry about blending and trying to find your um, light, medium, and dark tone if you just want the work done for you. So for this one, I'm actually going to use this color right here, which is E50. This is an eggshell. Um, and then I'm going to, actually I'm gonna use raw silk. I'm not gonna use that one. I'm gonna use raw silk, which is E53. I'm going to use um, brick beige, and then I'm also going to use barely beige for my skin tone. And I'm just going to color it off on this, the, on this piece of paper just to see what my colors are. I'm thinking that I'm gonna wanna blend it like this. Um, so let's see here. And I actually don't use my Copic markers or this blend technique. Yeah, that's right. So this is the order I want to do it in. I don't use this on everything. Like if I just have like her, her lips, I may just use a lipstick color and call it good. I may not use you know, three colors on that. It really just depends. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I want to start to lay down my first color, which is going to be my raw silk. So I'm just gonna get this base down first. Right, my base is laid down and so from here I'm just going to take my mid-tone and I'm not going to color the whole thing I'm just gonna work on highlighting features and uh, um, coloring and adding a little bit of shadows and more detail on certain spots of my image and this is going to just you can think about where the light hits and things like that I honestly have no clue how that all works. So I just kind of um, lay my color down. I use the artist lines to help determine uh, where I want that shadowing and things to be. Um, but I just wing it, you guys. I know that there's probably 
a better way, so to speak, or there's some technical way to do this. You'd like think about the light coming in this way and you would color accordingly. I I'm not like that, like I can't do that. Okay, so once your mid-tone is put down, you're gonna go wanna go in with your darker tone. And now we're just adding in those shadows. So your light tone is pretty much gonna be all over everything. Your mid-tone will be over some of it, and then your dark tone will be over the least amount of your image. This is just adding in those, um, those, just those shadows and those those darker areas. And then once you get that all laid out, and it looks pretty splotchy right now, I know, you go back in with your light tone and you blend it all out. So we're just going to go right back in through here, color all over it, and it just blends everything out, giving the shadows and everything that we had laid down without those harsh lines. This is your blending. Your lightest color is your blending. Your colorless blender is not. Your colorless blender is actually an eraser. And if you have to use something as an eraser, and I highly recommend, because as you can see, I got some into her hair. I'm not neat. If you have to use an eraser, at the, I recommend you do it at the end, because when I color her hair, this will blend in to her hair and I won't even have to worry about it. And a lot of times you can do something else besides the colorless blender to help erase that color. And I'll tell you what that is at the end as well. So if you're gonna skimp on anything, I would definitely skimp on that colorless blender. You really don't need it. Your blending is always going to be your lightest color that you lay down with your alcohol ink. This only works, you guys, these techniques I'm giving you are only for alcohol ink. This is not for other marker types, not a water-based type, okay? So if you're gonna try this, make sure you only use alcohol ink. All right, so for this one, now I showed you the traditional way of how you are supposed to lay color down with a alcohol, alcohol marker, right? I'm gonna show you kind of a cheater way, and that is we're gonna go backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the light, the darker color first, and then I'm gonna work backwards, and you can just kind of see um, if there's any kind of um, difference, and you can proceed with picking whatever technique you like best. So for this, I am just going in, again, I'm starting with that darker tone, and then I'm going to put in my medium tone. And there again, I, I kind of made a mess, okay? And that's okay. So that was my darker. So let me go in with my mid-tone now. And I'm just going to start to add in some more of that color, making sure that I go over all those darker areas. And I'm just adding in that color. So we're just kind of skipping a step with this, all right? I'm just gonna take this down here. And if I go back and go, hey, I need some more, you know, I need a, a more of a shadow, I can do that. And then I'm gonna go over all of it with this lighter tone right here. And it should blend everything through Personally speaking, this way that I'm teaching or showing you how to do it, where you put the darker down first and then you go back through and you add in a lighter. This is my favorite way to do it just because I'm lazy and I really don't want to have to uh, waste unnecessary time. So if I can skip a step and get the same results, I'm gonna skip a step and get the same results. All right, so there we go. So. That are, that's two ways that you can do 
use your alcohol um, markers. I'm gonna go speed up the video a little bit here and I'm going to finish coloring this in using the same type of technique. On some of it, on some of the elements, I may not use three colors, I may only use one. So um, just keep that in mind, for especially for some of the smaller elements like her lips. You know, I'm probably just gonna use one color. So let me speed this up, put on some music for you, and you can see how this comes together.
it washed me color that whole thing I by no means was very neat about it um I'm a pretty sloppy colorist I admit it so what I'm doing right now is I'm going back through and I'm using a colorless blender this isn't even by Copic I have one but it's over there and I don't want to get up and go get it so I'm just using this one and you just want to push on the color back in where you want it to go so as I get to that line I'm not scribbling I'm pushing lifting pushing lifting pushing lifting and it just pushes that color back in or erases that color and the reason why I'm saying I'm pushing it back in I'm not really pushing the color back into the image I am erasing it but by pushing it I'm not pulling the color out by going back and forth so I'm, I'm I'm telling myself that I'm pushing the color back because if I start to scribble, I'm probably gonna pick up some of that line and erase out some of that color, which I don't wanna do. And as you can tell, it literally erases the color. So this is what a colorless blender is for. It's literally to erase color. It works really well at it. If you did notice that down here, I had gotten a little bit sloppy. Um, oh, I got a little sloppy in a lot of areas, but right here, this gray went into her hand as well as the pumpkin. So I just went over with the skin tone and colored over it and it blended it right out. Now, I did that to show you guys how you can do it. I actually don't really care if I had any lines left, but I really don't anymore. This will dry. You'll see at the end when I, as I color this one and it'll give it time to dry and you won't even be able to tell. Um, I don't care because I'm going to cut around it. So I'm going to cut this image out. So for this one, if I color outside of the lines, I'm not going to blend it out or push it back in with my colorless blender because I'm going to cut it. Now, if you do not have a colorless blender, which you don't need, all you have to do is you just have to take a white jelly roll pen and carefully go over those spots that you have with it and it blends right in so that's another option to clean up your art all right so let's go ahead and color this one in and then i'm going to cut it out and i will show you my final card
And there you go. That is how you can use your alcohol markers to color with. And as you can see, it did some of it did fall through to this paper. And I'm glad that I had it down because it would have seeped back into my image. And as you can tell, I am not like the I'm a sloppy artist and on every front. And so um, if I can do it, you can do it. I did want it to provide for you another resource. This is actually how I got started getting comfortable with Copic markers was through the Tribeland Spectrum um, Nori marker. And what this is, is it is three markers in one. Now I would demonstrate, I, I have videos on how to use this, um, but I can't do it right now because mine are actually dried out. Uh, but what you do is basically you have a fair skin blend and this tells you this is the dark tip, this is the mid, this is the mid tone, and this is the light tip. So you would color this one in first and then you would go on down and use this one and then you would go on down and use this one. This is a nice way to blend perfectly without worrying about the perfect match. If you do not color much or if you want to try coloring with alcohol markers but you don't know if you wanna make the investment, one of these is about the same price, maybe about 20 to 25% more than one Copic marker. So uh, it's definitely cheaper. Uh, you also don't get as much alcohol ink as you would, but it still lasted me a long time. And the two um, ones that I like to use a lot of are the Fair Skin Blend. There, This one is an earth brown blend. And then there is a tan blend as well. So you can get some really great colors with this. All right. I am going to put together my card that I am creating, my two cards. This is... This is a background that I did a while ago. Um, I'm gonna slap her on that one and then I'm gonna slap this one on this background. It's gonna be so cute. I'll be back in a minute with the finished product. And there we go. There were our two things I wanted to tell you. Um, I meant to show you why you wanted to leave those stamps in your Misty and that's because, so I left them in here um, and I didn't need to do this, but that's because once you got done coloring, if you had a lot of out of the lines or you feel like you want your lines to be a little bit more bold, before you cut them out, if you cut out your images, you would slip it right back into the Misty right where it was and then just stamp it again. And that would make your lines appear more crisp. And it also would camouflage a lot of any colors that you may not have done inside of the lines. The other thing I wanted to tell you was I know that I'm gonna get questions on where did I get these fantastic images. Unfortunately, the company that I got them through, Sassy and Crafty, is no longer in business, and so you're probably not gonna be able to find them on their website. So you might wanna try like eBay um, or something like that. I'm really sorry. I, I don't like to make a habit of showcasing products that you can no longer get. However, the premise of this video was to show you how to color with a Copic marker, and so that's why I went ahead and, and used these images. Plus, I really, really love of them um, but unfortunately as of right now they are no longer available I did go ahead and use some unicorn stickles throughout their hair just to give it a little bit extra bling I popped it up on some pop dots and put them on the front of this card if you're interested in how I created this this these backgrounds I do have that link so check it out if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below for me. Until next time, I'm Bets Golden. Happy crafting.